Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. I am very happy to have you here. It is April 1st, the first of the month, which means that it is the start of a new month of awareness causes. This month, it is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And this is a awareness month that is very dear to me because it is something that unfortunately I have an experience with, but have educated myself and become an advocate for sexual assault awareness, for raising awareness about sexual assault, um, but also for domestic violence. So this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. So please join me. Um, if you are around anyone, if you are at home, if you have family, especially your teenagers and your young adults, please ask them to join you because this is a very important month um, that I think that everybody should be aware of and should also um, take some part in because there are so many victims um, of sexual assault and there are different forms of sexual assault that people are not aware of that is important for us to to be conscious of. Um, I wanted to start out by saying that even though that I've been a victim of sexual assault, I do not feel like a victim anymore. I am a survivor. Um, I'm a survivor of both sexual assault and domestic violence. Um, it is something that I, though I have had the experience of being a victim, I have learned a lot in my lifetime, during my journey, um, in my healing process. And I think it's very important that other survivors, including myself, speak up and talk to people about their experiences, their traumas, how they overcome um, their fears and their, their uh, traumatic experiences, anything bad that has ever happened in your life you can learn from. Anything that has happened in your life as a result of someone else violating you or taking advantage of you or hurting you, you can learn from. So one of the reasons among many that I started the Speak Up and Inspire series is because not only do I have a voice that I felt the need to speak up and talk, there are so many people out there who are working in the community right now who are also survivors, but also people that are in the community who have the passion to help others. And I realized that in my journey to healing that I'm not the only one that has been affected by different things in my life. Other people have been affected too. And just to be able to share my story and to talk to others um, and to just reach one person every single time that I talk or share my story is a blessing and a fulfillment for me. I have met my purpose and my mission a thousand times over every single time I'm able to share my story, go out into the community and raise awareness, but also to just be able to hold someone or hug someone or reassure someone or share some information that you might not know or that others might not know. So I wanted to start off with this month. It is April and it is sexual assault awareness among other things. So the other awareness causes for April, excuse me, are, um, let me see. So it is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It is Child Abuse Prevention Month. It is also Stress Awareness and National Minority, Minority Health Month and National Counseling Awareness Month. So this month, and we will have an updated list in the Speak Up and Inspire page on Facebook of who we're going to be talking about this month. And they will all be related to the awareness causes for this month. So. Today, you're going to be talking to me and getting to know me a little bit better. Um, I want you to feel free to ask me any questions that you have um, about my journey, about what I do, about my book, about my experiences, anything you want to ask. I'm an open book. 
Um, I have no problem at asking, I'm sorry, answering your questions. Um, also, next Monday on the 8th, on the 8th we will be talking to Miss Patricia Bush. Miss Patricia Bush is a counselor. Um, she is a marriage and family counselor, and she is going to be talking to us about stress in marriages and how to handle stress in marriages, and also about reconnecting with your partner. Um, she has a marriage, she does marriage retreats, marriage counseling, marriage group counseling, different events to enhance marriages and to enhance um, relationships among couples. So please tune in next Monday at eight o'clock with Miss Patricia, or sorry, with Miss Patrice Bush, um, who is a licensed family and marriage counselor. Also on the 15th, we are going to be talking to Miss D. Um, she has an organization that helps youth in our community and herself, she is a survivor of child abuse um, and abuse in her family. So she is a, a survivor too, and she will be talking to us about her experience as a child abuse survivor and what she is doing in the community now to, to help youths be their best self and to overcome traumas in their life. On the 22nd, we are going to be talking to Ms. Latanya Summers, who is another survivor. She is going to be talking to us about her organization, what she's doing in the community. And also on the 29th, we are going to be talking to Ms. T. Sharon. So we have a awesome lineup of inspirational advocates and speakers and business owners who are going to be talking to us all month about the various awareness causes that are taking place this month in April. Right now, I would like for you to go to my Facebook page, the Speak Up and Inspire series. Please like the page so that you will be able to get updates about, excuse me, about what we are talking about every week, who we are going to be talking with, and then also the different subjects that we are going to be sharing um, throughout the, the following weeks. Um, we rarely take breaks. I think I've only taken one Monday break because I feel that it's important. This is a very important cause that we have started and that people need to hear this information. Even if you are already versed, even if you are already an advocate, even if you are already a community leader, um, even if you are already very active in your community, I think it's important for us to, to have a ongoing, regularly scheduled platform for community leaders and activists to speak up, but also for people um, that are not necessarily advocates, but that have experience, um, that want to just share their story and want to share their passions. You don't have to be a business owner. You don't have to be an advocate. You don't have to be a survivor. If you have something to say, then I want to talk to you right here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So tonight, um, I want to um, say hello to some of you that are on right now. Miss Natasha, hello. Um, thank you for joining us. Miss Natasha is a survivor of domestic violence. I met her um, at a shelter, and I am so, so proud of her progress and what she is doing in the community right now. Um, she is speaking up for other women and families in her community, and she is just just blossoming and she has gained gaining her wings as the beautiful butterfly that she is. I am so impressed with her. Um, I love her dearly. And so please look out for Miss Natasha McClenahan. She is doing great things in the community. Um, hello, Miss Precious. Miss Precious, we talked to her um, last week or sorry, the week before um, about her organization. Um, and if you would go into the Speak Up and Inspire series Facebook page, you will be able to see the replay um, with Precious. When I tell you that she was one of my favorite interviews, she was awesome very inspirational. She has a book out that um, has inspirational affirmations, 365 days. So please go to my Facebook page so you can see the re replay of Miss Precious um, so that you can see the, her interview and to see how she is helping women and young girls in her community, but also to just be able to hear her prophetic words. She's a poet and she um, 
she was able to, excuse me, I'm sorry. She shared, <laughs> I've got tongue tied. She shared three of her poems with us. Um, one was about domestic violence. One was just about empowering yourself. Um, she's an amazing woman. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. Um, please, please, please go and check out her interview with us on the Speak Up and Inspire series. You can go into our Facebook page to see the link to be able to see that video. Hello, Ms. Valerie Simon. Thank you for joining us and thank you uh, for being an advocate in our community and everybody else who is on with us right now. Hello, Mr. Brian. Hello, Ms. Alicia. And hello, Ms. Dion. Ms. Dion is a wine professional. If you love wine, please look up Ms. Dion Smith. Um, she can introduce you to some wines that are amazing and even some of your favorites from all over the world. So that's Miss Dion Smith. Thank you for joining us. So I wanted to talk to you about sexual assault. It's sexual assault awareness. And um, I want to make it very clear that sexual assault could be a number of things. So sexual assault, when you think sexual assault, what do you think? So if you're watching right now, when you think sexual assault, what do you feel the definition of sexual assault is? So I want you to type in the comments right now, what do you feel that sexual assault is? And while you're doing that, I am going to pull up a website that is dedicated to sexual assault awareness. So I want you to take some time right now to type in the comments, when you think of sexual assault, what do you think of? Because I think it's a very important that when we're talking about sexual assault awareness, that we're very clear about what sexual assault is. So please, in the comments, type for me, what do you think when you think of sexual assault? What is sexual assault to you? What do you think sexual assault is? And share it. Let me know. While you are doing that, I want to tell you very quickly, well, not very quickly, because I'm going to share a couple of pages in my book, Reality Check. Um, Reality Check is a book that I wrote. I published it in June of last year. And this is a story of a survivor. Um, it starts off very strong, but this book is about a sexual assault survivor and her journey to being a survivor, not being a victim, but being a survivor of sexual assault, but also how she is inspired to help others in her community overcome their traumas, even though she is a victim herself. So I am reading your definitions, sexual assault, I see that it is verbal assault, that sexual assault is molestation, violations of another's body. Um, I also see unwanted sexual activity. Yes, keep them coming. Tell me what sexual assault is to you. What do you feel sexual assault is? In my book, Reality Check, I share an experience and some of you know this and some of you do not. Um, in this book, I describe a sexual assault experience. Um, it gets a little graphic, but it's personal. And I say that because when I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, I decided to move to Charlotte, Charlotte North Carolina when my parents moved here a year before me. Um, however, I was not supposed to move to Charlotte as soon as I did. I moved to Charlotte because I was raped. I was raped um, and I moved here in September. I was married, I mean, sorry, oh my goodness. I was raped the last weekend of July of 2005. Um, I was a host of a party. The um, security guy that I had there who was actually my security um, 
for this event that I had, um, I allowed him to stay at my house instead of staying in a hotel because I considered him a friend. Um, he was also a professional security guard. Um, and I allowed him to stay at my house instead of getting a hotel because honestly, I trusted him. Um, and in trusting him, I told him that he could stay at my house. And actually he asked if he could stay at my house and I let him do that. Um, after the party, he was a little tipsy, but he wasn't drunk as far as I knew and still believe that he was not drunk. Um, I had had a couple of drinks, but I was not drunk either. I was the host of the party, so I was not drunk. Um, we went home. Um, we were in my house. I went to the linen closet to give him um, some sheets, a pillow, and I believe a blanket. I handed it to him, and then I went into my room. Um, my expectation was for him to sleep on the couch. Um, when I went to go into my room, he followed me in my room, and I told him basically to get out of my room, um, and I was getting ready for bed. This had to have been maybe two o'clock in the morning. Um, when I went into my room, he followed me into the room, um, and he came on to me. I told him that I wasn't interested. I pushed him out of my room, um, and I told him to go to bed. Um, I even went to the closet to give him a towel in case he wanted to take a bath or take a shower. I was trying to be friendly, um, but at this point, um, he started to scare me um, because he had never been aggressive with me before. Um, I want to make note that we had never kissed. We had never had sex before this. Um, when we met, there was the intent or there was some kind of... Um, there was uh, an attraction there, but after I got to know him, I was no longer interested. Um, and so we were just friends. Um, I invited him into my home. He was security for my, for my party. He came home um, with me. I told him to go on the couch to sleep. And once he came and approached me, um, I told him that I wasn't interested. I pushed him out of my room. I tried to play it off. I laughed it off. But when he came back the second time, um, making advances at me. I told him no again. And I told him to get out of my room. Um, because I had been a victim of assault before, um, I had already learned from going in, in counseling and through that journey of trying to heal from that incident um, to be very direct, to not show fear, to say exactly what you mean. And that's what I did. I told him no. I told him I wasn't interested. I asked him to leave my room and he would not take no for an answer. Um, it became very physical. I fought him as hard as I could. Um, even though he was a slim guy, he was a man, he was stronger than me. Um, I'm a pretty thick girl now. I was probably 70, 80 pounds lighter than I am now. Um, and I felt vulnerable. I was in my own home. Um, I told him no, and he he did not he did not take no for an answer. I had to fight him. And by the time it was all said and done, um, he raped me. He beat me up. Um, I screamed. He almost suffocated me. Um, I was living in an apartment complex, so my screaming. He ended up hitting me to make me um, stop screaming. Um, he chased me around the house. Things got broken. And when it came down to it, the only way that he was able to um, assault me was by putting me or pushing me face down um, with my head covered, um, almost suffocating. And he raped me anally. Um, I put up a very good fight, um, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't get him off of me, and um, and he raped me. Um, when I was 
able to get away from him. Um, I ran to the door of my apartment. Now, mind you, when we were fighting and I was running away from him, every single time I would get close to the door, um, he would either push me or grab me. Um, at one point, he yanked me by my hair. Um, and after he raped me, I started screaming and yelling, and he looked at me and laughed. And I pushed him. I don't know what, how, where I found the energy at, but I pushed him and I ran to the front door and started yelling and screaming. And my neighbors came out. And when my neighbors came out, which was two men that lived around me, um, he ran out the door and um, and left. One of my neighbors did chase him, um, but was not able to hold him until the police got there. So that is the reason that I moved to Charlotte as quickly as I did. Within a month, I had um, put my resignation into my government job that I had in Washington, D.C., making really, really good money. And I relocated to, um, to Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you have ever read my book, um, and I know, Natasha, you've read my book. What I just told you and what I just shared probably sounds familiar to the first chapter of my book. Um, I did want to share some of my book with you. Um, and I won't go over that part of it. Um, but I don't want to go into details about what I about the experience or the rape in the book because I basically described a lot of it just now. Um, but what I did want to share with you is that, um, no, I lost my marker. Let me see. Okay, I can't find it, but there was a point in here that I wanted to share with you. I took the marker out, unfortunately. Um, so I don't want to waste time looking for it. But if you have read my book, then what I just described to you probably sounds familiar to you. Um, because I am really sharing my story in this book. Um, I was not able to share my story um, as me. I did not write a biography. Um, I wasn't ready to do that. So I wrote my story and my experiences through the characters in this book. Tony is me in this book. She shared my experience and my journey um, to healing in this book. Um, this book was very healing for me. Um, it was something that I needed to write. It was something that I needed to get out there. But this is my experiences right here in this book um there is also a story in here um one of the other major characters is melanie and she was in foster care and her foster care parent and one of the boys in the foster care assaulted her in this story and that is also part of my story and part of my background I lost my virginity to rape two boys in my uh, neighborhood. I was 12 years old and 12, I'm sorry, not 12. I was about to go into middle school. So I was about 13 years old. Um, two boys that I did not like. Um, they walked into my house. The front door was open. The screen was closed. They just walked into my house. Um, and I've always, when it came to, to to people, I've always had a really good sense of people. I never liked these boys. They walked into my house as if they owned it. When I asked them to leave, um, they wouldn't leave. And they, one of them held me down and the other one raped me. That's how I lost my virginity. A lot of people don't know that. But if you have been listening to me and you've been listening to my podcast, if you've seen me talk to people, then you are familiar with that story. So I have been a, a, a victim and I've also been a survivor on more than one occasion. So sexual assault awareness 
is very, very dear to me. It's very um, intimate and it's very personal. So reading my book, you will be able to, to see pieces of me, learn about pieces of me, but also take the journey with me to healing. Sexual assault is not just sexual penetration. Sexual assault could be unwanted advances. It could be verbal assault with sexual intent. Um, it can be uh, workplace sexual harassment. Um, sexual harassment, I mean, assault does not always have to be penetration. Um, it could be touching. Um, it can be verbal. It can be verbal. Mm, excuse me. Um, sexual assault can also be uh, between heterosexuals, between homosexuals, between bisexuals. There is no race that is exempt. There is no color that is exempt. There is no preference that is exempt. Anybody can be a victim of sexual assault. Anyone, male, female, young, old, child, adult, anyone can be a victim of sexual assault. Sexual assault is unwanted sexual advances and it does not have to be penetration. Now, if we're looking at the legal standpoint, you have sexual assault and then you also have rape. So the difference between the two is that rape includes penetration. Sexual assault is everything that is sexually unwanted towards another person that does not always include penetration, but when it includes penetration, it then becomes rape. So those are the differences between sexual assault and rape. Rape is also sexual assault, but sexual assault is not always rape. Sexual assault is unwanted sexual advances, words, actions that does not always include penetration. Rape, on the other hand, includes penetration. A lot of people do not know that. When people think sexual assault, they automatically assume that sexual assault is rape with penetration. That's not always the case. For example, hello, Miss Tonya. Hello, Miss Blackwood. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hello, my sister Yvette is on here right now, and I know she's gonna have questions for me later. <laughs> and I'm sure I probably just shared something that she didn't know, or maybe she did. Um, but sexual assault, people always assume that sexual assault is also equivalent to rape. Rape is with penetration. Sexual assault does not always have to be penetration. So that is one thing that is very specific that should be discussed throughout Sexual Assault Awareness Month, just being able to know the difference. And legally, when an officer says that such and such has been charged with sexual assault, that does not always mean that that person sexually penetrated another person. That could mean that they were, um, maybe they touched them, maybe they groped their, their breast, maybe they were sending them lewd messages um, saying what they wanted to do to them sexually, maybe um, they uh, took pictures of them that they did not want to have taken, or something like that. Sexual assault does not always mean penetration, and it does not always mean that rape has occurred but rape always includes penetration. That is one of the biggest things that I wanted to impress for Sexual Assault Awareness Month and introducing sexual assault awareness this month, knowing what sexual assault is and what rape is. Rape is a form of sexual assault, but not always is sexual assault rape. So. When we talk about sexual assault awareness, are you talking to your families, especially your girls and your boys? It's really important for us to talk to our children about sexual assault. When I was assaulted and I lost my virginity to rape, I was, I believe, between 
13, I believe, going into middle school. I don't remember my exact age. Um, but I remember going a whole year without telling anyone. I told my best friend and I asked her not to tell anyone because the two boys, when they left my house, they told everyone that I willingly had sex with them, which was not true. And so this, of course, went all over the neighborhood and now I was labeled as being a hoe. But that wasn't the truth. I was raped. They raped me. And to, I guess, defend their actions before I said anything, they started spreading rumors about me that I had sex with them willingly, but that wasn't the truth. So I held it in for a year. And what it took for it to come out was for um, was for a movie to come on was excuse me I'm sorry was for a movie to come on and I was watching the movie with my parents and in the movie was a rape scene and in this rape scene um, it was kind of violent and I was sitting there with my parents. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was watching the movie. The rape scene came up and I ran upstairs and ran into my room. And my parents or my mom came into the room and asked me, why was I, was I crying? And I told her why I was crying, of course. And when I told her, she went and told my dad. And when she went and told my dad, my dad went to the, um, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to pull up something that I wanna to talk to you about and it's not pulling up, I'm sorry. Um, I told my mom, my mom told my dad and my dad went to the boy's house and talked to his parents. Um, I never saw the boy again. <laughs> Thankfully, um, I have no idea what happened. I never asked. Um, but what I know is that taking that year by myself at 13 years old was the longest year of my life, one of the longest years of my life. I was thankful to my best friend for not telling anyone. But when I finally did break down and tell my parents, um, she was able to verify with my parents what I had told her when it, when it happened, some details that I had forgotten or had pushed in the back of my mind um, during that year. Um, a lot of things became more clear um, to my parents um, about some of my, uh, my um, behaviors and some of my attitudes that were going on during that year. Um, they also understood why I reacted to certain people um, that were in our neighborhood, especially the kids that were taunting me and calling me a hoe. Um, but it was a really hard year for me. But what was really difficult for me during that time is that I felt that my parents said if I told them that one, they wouldn't believe me because they had gotten whiffed of all these rumors, supposedly, that were going on but also because my parents never talked to me really about sex. Um, I had older sisters, um, but they never talked to me um, really about sex. Um, they just talked to me about not having sex, but having a real live conversation about sex, they didn't talk to me about that. So it was really hard to talk to my parents about anything sexual growing up. Um, and so being raped, losing my virginity to rape, and then having to go to my parents and tell them about it, at, the, at that age, not ever having a conversation with them about sex and, you know, what it was and, and so forth and so on, um, it was really hard for me to go to my parents. And I think that if I would have had those kind of conversations with my, with my parents, and if I um, 
had known about sexual assault, if I had known about sex, really, um, then I probably, or maybe not, but I think that I probably would have gone to my parents and told them um, what happened to me. Now, I'm not blaming my parents because in no way, shape, or form is it their, their fault. Um, I don't fault, fault them for not having that conversation with me sooner because they didn't know that I was going to become a victim of, of assault. They didn't know that. Um, but what I do know is that now, as a parent, I talk to my kids about sexual assault. I talk to them about sex. I talk to them about, you know, um, respecting your body and um, demanding respect from others when it comes to your body and your personal space. I talk to them about the things to look for in people um, that might not be good for you to, to, to uh, follow your gut feelings, follow your instincts about people. If it doesn't feel right, then it probably is not right. Um, I'm very open with them about, um, about domestic violence, which is something else that I advocate about. Um, I'm very open with my kids when it comes to talking to them about things such as sex, such as boys, such as girls, such as um, personal space, um, violations, um, being respectful. Um, and even though my children are not perfect, they know what sexual assault is. They know what rape is. They know what domestic violence is. They know that our bodies are temples and that they, they should be respected. They know that sex is not just a casual thing, that sex is something that should be between people that love each other and care about each other. Um, even though I might not be a perfect parent, I do talk to them as much as I can and try to educate them as much as I can. And that's what Sexual Assault Awareness Month is all about. It's about raising awareness about sexual assault, um, defining what sexual assault is, um, and also just, um, you know, letting, helping people to understand the myths about sexual assault. Um, men can be victims of sexual assault um, just as much as women. The only difference is, is that men um, have the, um, how can I say, the tendency to not report that they have become victims of sexual assault or rape because they feel that it takes away from their manliness or their manhood. But when you are a victim, you are a victim. It doesn't matter if you're a man or if you're a woman. Um, in the beginning of my book, I um, have my acknowledgments here, and it says that sexual assault is defined as unwanted and non-consexual sexual, sorry, contact. Rape is a form of sexual assault that involves sexual intercourse or sexual penetration. Many do not know that there is a distinction between the two. I am a survivor of both. I hope that by sharing my story throughout Reality Check and Books to Come, that I will be able to educate others about sexual assault and rape and highlight some ways that I have been able to personally become a survivor. I hope that if you have ever been a victim of any crime, then my writings will inspire you to put away the feeling of being a victim and start your journey to healing as well. That is what sexual assault awareness is, is sharing your stories if you have one, educating, raising awareness about sexual assault and what it is, um, but also talking about what you can do as a victim to become a survivor. Um, I've also mentioned in here, in the back, some resources for people if they have been a victim of sexual assault or if they have um, been a victim of domestic violence. Um, there are many resources. If you go to um, Google sexual assault um, hotline, you will see that there is a sexual assault hotline, 800 number. It's 24-7 out, 24-7 hotline. You will also find that there are sexual assault centers where you can get help if you become a victim of sexual assault. You will also um, find that there are um, advocates in your community, including myself, um, you have people that are there to help 
to raise awareness. If you have, if you work in a helping profession where you are working with people, or you are working in a an agency that um, works for the community, then bring in speakers, survivors to educate your staff, educate your organization, excuse me, educate your clients about sexual assault, domestic violence, and other traumatic things that people go through. Um, be a part of the change. Be a part of the inspiration that helps women like me who have been a victim become survivors. It's very important. As I talk about in my book, and if you've read it, that unfortunately in, in the book, I was able to find justice or Tony, the main character in the book was able to find justice for her assault. Me, I did not. Um, my first instance, my father was my justice. Whatever he did, I don't know. And honestly, me, it doesn't matter. I never saw that boy again. But my last experience and the one that I describe in my book, Reality Check, um, I did not get justice completely. Um, he actually was arrested later for another charge against another woman. Um, I got scared. Um, someone started stalking me and that made me leave uh, Charlotte. And so I did not go through the whole process because it was too much for me. It was overwhelming for me. Um, and I just did not want to go through the whole court experience. But later on, my justice came through when his victim after me contacted me because she saw that I had filed charges against him and she saw my case, she contacted me and I was able to tell her what happened to me. I was able to talk to her lawyer. I was able to be a part of her case and thus he went to jail um, for her. Um, I could have pursued it. I could have came um, back and I could have gone to court for it. I chose not to. Um, at the time, it was just too much for me. It was too overwhelming. I had small kids. Well, I just had had my twins when the, his second or his next victim contacted me. But I was satisfied with the fact that I was able to help someone else get justice and helping her get justice helped me get justice. It helped me um, on to further my journey as a survivor. That's why we speak up. That's why we talk about our experiences. That's why we share what we have overcome in our lives. Not everyone has to be a victim to talk, to share, to educate, to raise awareness. I've chosen to do that. Can you choose to do that too for Sexual Assault Awareness Month? It's also Child Abuse Awareness Month. Do you have experience with that? Do you have education with child abuse? I encourage you that when you get off or when you when this um, when this interview with me or this show um, here on the Speak Up and Inspire series, when this ends this evening, I would like for you to do some some research on your own. I want you to look up sexual assault because don't take my word for it. Look it up, find out what the different forms are, look to see what the laws are in your state when it comes to sexual assault and rape to find out what your state says about sexual assault and about rape. I've done that and it has changed from Maryland where I was assaulted to here in, in North Carolina. The rules are a little bit different, um, but you can get justice. There are organizations that are out here to help you. There are advocates that will be there for you. My organization, Butterfly Visions Project, we provide emergency services for victims of sexual assault and domestic violence. If you call us or contact us, we will go to the hospital with, with you. We will go to the police um, station with you if you decide to press charges. We will go to court with you if you would like for us to go to court with you. 
we will refer you to mental health counseling. We will refer you to doctors who um, have shown and have proven that they are sensitive to victims of sexual assault. Um, it can be really hard to press charges. It can really be hard to take that next step to go to, to the police. It can be even harder to go to court to face the person that took advantage of you. Unfortunately, I wasn't strong enough at the time to do that because I had children that I wanted to focus on and they were my priority at the time. But my healing came from writing. My healing comes from speaking up. My healing comes from helping victims now. My healing comes from sharing my story, writing my poetry, being open to those who want to come and talk to me with the Speak Up and Inspire series and with my organization, The Butterfly Visions Project. Sexual assault is serious. It affects many people. If I look in, I'm going to look up sexual assault statistics for 2018. And let's see what I come up with. So I'm looking at the sexual assault statistics from the National Sex Violence Resource Center. So let's see if we can get some statistics. It says that one in five women and one in 71 men will, re will be raped at some point in their lives. It says that 51.1% of female victims of rape reported being raped by an intimate partner and 40.8% by an acquaintance. In my situation, the man that raped me was an acquaintance. He was not my intimate partner, never had been an intimate partner. It also says that 52.4% of male victims report being raped by an acquaintance. And 15. then it also gives some statistics when it comes to race. It says almost half of multiracial women and over 45% of American Indian Alaska Native women were subjected to some form of contact sexual violence in their lifetime. If you go to my blog, speakupandinspireblog.com, I did a review on a movie. And it was about um, a Native um, a Native American woman, two Native American women that were raped and killed um, in this Native American um, uh, reservation or town. Um, so go to my blog, speakupandinspireblog.com to look at the movie, look at the, um, the highlights um, from the movie. And it's a very good movie to watch. Um, and it's, it's very inspirational. The, the movie was done in clean taste. Um, I believe that it gave justice and it gave um, good background to the Native um, American community. And I'm trying to... I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to find what I'm looking for so I can share it with you. Okay, so if you go to the Speak Up and Inspire blog, um, dot com. The name of the movie, and I'm sorry because my memory is awful. The name of the movie was called Wind River. So Wind River, it's about a Native American community and two young women were raped and killed in this Native American community. So I would encourage you to go to my blog, speakupandinspireblog.com, read the review, and then watch it. Um, it gives a lot of information. And even though it is a, um, a drama and it's a movie and it's fictitious, um, it gives you insight to the, the legal system, the court system, um, how um, family and traditions and race can affect how people view rape and, and, and look at um, the different scenarios that, that happen before and after rape, how it affects the family, how it affects the, the police force, how the police respond to rape. Um, and then just overall, um, it's a very good, inspirational, but also educational movie. So I would encourage everyone to watch it. Again, you can see the review that I did at the speakupandinspireblog.com. 
So the movie is called Wind River. I encourage everyone to watch it. It's a very good movie. Um, it's actually, and very action packed too. So it's a very good movie. So I encourage you to, to, um, to watch it. Again, looking at statistics, it says that 90%, 91% of victims of rape and sexual assault are female and 9% are male. Um, I believe that those statistics are not accurate because um, most men, I would probably say and guess, this is just my personal guesstimate, that at least 60% of men do not report their rapes according to the research that I've done and according to research that I've seen in the past. So I want to also share the cost and the impact of sexual assault. Um, the lifetime cost of rape per victim is $122,461. It says that 81% of women and 35% of men report significant short or long-term impacts such as post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, healthcare is 16% higher for women who were sexually abused as children and 36% <clears throat> higher for women who were physically and sexually abused as children. Um, I want to stop right there to talk about the impacts. Um, I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I have triggers. One is still movies. Movies can be um, triggering for me. Um, also, um, when a person um, is very aggressive, especially men, um, towards me, even if it's not in a sexual way, but just aggressive in nature um, is a trigger for me. Um, I still sometimes have um, nightmares, um, not as much as I used to, but sometimes I have nightmares. And then also relationships. Um, the person that rapes me was an acquaintance. So I have some trust issues. When I meet people, um, I have to get to know them. Um, I am very nosy. I look into people's backgrounds. Um, I encourage women in the domestic violence shelter to look into a person's background before you get serious with them, before you date them, before they meet your children. Um, criminal records are public record. Look into them. Um, if I would have done that with the guy that assaulted me, I would have seen that he had domestic violence charges and he also had assault charges on women um, before me. Um, look into these men, look into these women, see what their histories are and take them seriously. There are a lot of effects for women um, that have been victims of sexual assault, assault not just post-traumatic stress disorder, but it's, it can cause um, intimacy issues, it can cause relationship is issues um, in your future, it can cause sexual dysfunction, um, it can cause an a, array of mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety, um, it can also cause phobias, not wanting to go outside, not wanting to be around a group of people, um, not wanting to be in social situations. Um, so sexual assault is very, very, very serious. And the results and the effects of sexual assault can be lifetime. Um, this happened to me in 2005. Um, even though I don't feel the everyday effects of it anymore, I still do have moments where I cry or I'm triggered or something just in me, it, it comes back up in my mind and it still affects me sometimes. So if you ever have been a victim of sexual assault and you have not gone to counseling or have not see, sought some kind of treatment or help or taken advantage of the resources around you, I encourage you to do so. Start with your mental health. Every journey to healing starts with your mental health. Go to counseling. Talk about your experience. Know that what happened to you is not your fault. When you say no, when you tell a person that you are not interested in them, when you um, ward off sexual advances from your coworker, your friend, someone that's interested in you, and they violate your space and take advantage of you, it's not your fault. It is not your fault that you became victim to someone else's abuse. And that includes domestic violence. Sexual assault is very serious. It can harm you 
mentally and physically. If you've ever been a victim, please go get help. Go to your doctors, get checked out, make sure you do your STD panels, make sure that you request a rape advocate or sexual assault advocate at the hospital. Unfortunately, hospital staff and nurses and doctors um, have not been properly trained in our hospitals and our clinics to deal with victims in a compassionate manner. And you could unfortunately be re-victimized going through the hospitalization and the court process because people have not been properly trained to assist victims of sexual assault. Know that it is not your fault. Even a prostitute can be raped. Even a prostitute can be a victim of sexual assault. A person that is known to be promiscuous can be a victim of sexual assault. A virgin can be a victim of sexual assault or rape. A man can be a victim of sexual assault or rape. A person that's in the club, that's had a couple of drinks, can be a victim of sexual assault or rape. There are things that you can do to protect yourself. Know who you're with. Know who you are surrounding yourself with. Don't be afraid to go on to your computer and Google, do the public search, criminal public search in your state, and look up who you're associated with, who you're involved with, especially intimately, or you're dating, or before they meet your kids. Know who you're with. Don't trust everyone, because not everybody is worth being trusted. When you say no, be firm, mean what you say, let your yes mean yes. Let your no mean no. And if you mean no, and if that's not what you want, be firm and try to remove yourself from the situation. They say that if you ever find yourself in a situation where a person, where the, the, it feels like you're being assaulted or possibly becoming a victim of rape, they say that you should not fight the person, but if it wasn't for me fighting my attacker, I think that he would have hurt me worse than he did. I, my personal experience would say, if you can get out of a situation that feels uncomfortable, when it feels uncomfortable, get out of the situation. Whether it's in a car, whether it's in a home, whether it's in a hotel, whether it's on the bus, whether it's in the street, whether it's at your friend's house, whether it's at your mama's house, whether no matter the situation, if it feels uncomfortable or if someone makes you uncomfortable, you have the right to separate yourself from the person and the situation when you feel uncomfortable or unsafe. Listen to your senses. Your senses are usually right. I had a feeling that the guy was being too aggressive. I should have asked him to leave and I felt it. Unfortunately, I didn't, and I, and I'm, you know, we don't know if I would have asked him to leave when I felt that first discomfort that he was in my space after I asked him to leave, would he have left? I don't know. But what I do know is that I did everything that I could to not become a victim, and I became a victim anyway. But there are people that have been able to stop being a victim of rape. And even though they still were sexually assaulted, they were not raped. There's also been people who listened to their senses, they paid attention, they knew, they knew the person that they were involved with, they listened to their intuition, and as soon as they felt uncomfortable or unsafe, 
they got out of the situation and there have been cases and I have seen these cases that they got out of the situation but not too long after the person raped someone else or they violated someone else. Speak up, follow your heart, share your experiences, educate yourself, do your research, talk to your family, talk to your friends, talk to your children, raise awareness. It's Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It doesn't just stop and it doesn't just start in April. We need to be doing this all year round. And even though we're talking about it in April, we need to be talking about it every day to not only protect ourselves, but to, to protect our children, to protect the people that we love and care about, and to protect our community. In my book, and this is not a sales pitch in any way, shape, or form, but I share my experiences. I shared the steps that I did. I went to the hospital. I got help physically. I went to a mental health counselor, even though it was hard for me to do that. I told people, I didn't blame myself. I went through with the court process. I did everything that I needed to do to become whole again in my real life and in reality check. We have to do it. We have to raise awareness. We have to speak up. We have to be a part of the change. We have to raise awareness. We have to educate. We have to protect each other. If we don't protect each other, who will? I am not a victim. I am a survivor. If you are a victim, you can be a survivor too. There is help out there. You can talk to me. You can talk to the resources in your community. You can talk to the other advocates that I have shared in the Speak Up and Inspire um, podcast, but also that I share on my wall often on Butterfly Visions Project page. I'm constantly sharing resources for domestic violence and sexual assault. If you are a victim and you need to talk and you have not sought help, seek help. If you are a survivor, speak up. Inspire others to speak up. Educate, advocate, raise awareness. I hope that everyone has a good night and I'll talk to you soon. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire Center.